page 61 of your cardiac dysrhythmia interpretation book, I now want to talk about sinus arrest or sinus pause. And this is a potentially lethal rhythm. This is a rhythm where um, the heart rate and the underlying rhythm may vary uh, because these patients typically have something called six sinus syndrome where they have disease of the SA node. Uh, so the rhythm may vary, uh, but generally it's slow to normal. And uh, P waves are present in the underlying rhythm, but um, they'll be absent during the arrest or pause. So here we see <clears throat> a sinus rhythm underlying, and here we see the absence of P wave altogether and just this pause here before another beat happens. Uh, the peer interval um, in the underlying rhythm may be normal or prolonged. The QRS is usually narrow. The ratio in the underlying rhythm is one to one, and the rhythm is irregular. Now the key here is that um, in a sinus arrest or sinus pause, so we see this underlying uh, rhythm, uh, which is typically sinus or maybe a sinus bradycardium, and it's not uncommon to see an irregular sinus rhythm or irregular sinus bradycardia as the underlying rhythm, even though the P wave morphology is, is consistent all, of, all along. Because, again, remember this is six sinus syndrome, so we have disease of the SA node. But in this case, we have a pretty regular underlying rhythm, and the heart rate, in fact, is um, uh, pretty normal. Here we have um, QRS that falls in a dark line, and the heart rate here is 300, 150, 175, uh, 80, 85. So actually a heart rate about 85, so that's pretty good. And um, then we have this pause. And when the pause happens, um, in a sinus arrest or sinus pause, they're usually at least two beats that are lost. So one beat lost, two beats lost before the next beat occurs. So keep this in mind. Two beats lost, and the next beat that happens is called an escape beat. It's an escape beat because um, it, the area of the heart that, that generates this impulse for this P wave here um, it generates it in a compensatory manner. In, the, in, in other words, the heart recognizes that uh, higher pacemaker sites or other pacemaker sites have failed, and some area of the heart then takes over pacing. So this next beat here falls a little out of sequence from the underlying rhythm. So those are two key features in a sinus arrest, that there are at least two beats dropped, and the next beat, the escape beat, falls a little out of sequence from the underlying rhythm. Now, in terms of clinical presentation, obviously, you know, these patients can present anywhere from relatively asymptomatic to hemodynamically unstable. And what's important to um, observe and document is, um, number one, how often do these pauses occur? Um, so the number of times they occur, and how long are the pauses? Um, and um, one second is equal to five large squares. So here's one, two, three, four, five. That's one second here. One, two, three, four, five. That's two seconds. So this is about a two-second pause. So how long are the pauses? How frequently do they, do, do they occur? And what are the patient's symptoms when they have these pauses? So patients can uh, might experience dizziness or lightheadedness. In some cases, they may actually uh, experience syncopal episodes. Uh, I've seen sinus arrest last as long as 15 to 20 seconds. Uh, when I used to work as a cardiotech and did Holter monitoring, there were some patients who would have sinus arrest in the middle of the night, so they were completely unaware of it while they were sleeping, and they had sinus arrest of 15 to 20 seconds. That's a long period of asystole before an escape beat starts firing again. So. Uh, these patients are candidates for an internal pacemaker and in the field are candidates for uh, transcutaneous pacing. So this is a potentially life-threatening um, arrhythmia and quite serious. So again, remember how many times are these pauses occurring in, over the space of uh, each minute? How long are they? What kinds of symptoms do the patient uh, present with when they have these sinus pauses? And what's happening um, at the myocardial level essentially is that the SA node fails to fire, and so some other uh, ectopic focus has to take over pacing. This is an escape pacemaker, and it might be right next to the SA node that the pacemaker occurs, or it might be down here or over here. It could be anywhere, literally, but there's a pause followed by uh, an escape beat or an escape rhythm.